Yes, Richard, when did you start riding and where did you get your training? Oh, a little background, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I never wanted to be an astronaut or a fireman or a doctor or anything. I wanted to be a cowboy that's or a horseman. That's all I ever wanted to be. But I was raised in town in Fresno, California. My daddy was a preacher. My mama was a nurse. And we lived in a house with no horses and no opportunities. Uh, but if you have enough desire, you can dig around and find opportunities. So this is a great country we live in. There's a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, might not be you know, exactly how you'd want it in a perfect world, but there are opportunities. So when I was just in grade school, uh, across town in Fresno, California, there was a stable there that was seven miles from my house. I wore out a lot of bicycles for a few years. Every afternoon, pedaled over there, and I was the proverbial stable brat. I just hung out there and got in the way and got cussed at and pushed off to the side uh, month after month, year after year, looking for opportunities. Um, they had a, what we called a dude string, you know, 20 horses that people come out, $2 and 50 cents an hour is what it costs to rent a horse. That dates me, doesn't it? Uh, and you could ride these horses out around about a 10 acre pasture in a big loop. And after hanging around there long enough, the old man that saddled up the horses every morning, let me start helping him bring in the horses and saddle up the horses. And then eventually take some people out for this ride on this loop. And then there was a, a retired uh, doctor there that boarded his horses and he was a part-time rodeo cowboy and he only came out and would ride his horses on occasion and he said you know what here's the key to my uh my trailer where i keep my saddles and why don't you just kind of keep these two horses right here legged up for me <laughs> hey man you want to talk about an opportunity and uh and so that was a great thing i was like having my own horses there you know and i was like i don't know 13 something like that um, and then in junior high, uh, I begged and borrowed and stole my way into getting a job at a summer camp below Yosemite, California, where I wrangled dude horses there every summer for the next four years. I lived up there just between you and me. The first summer I washed more dishes than I rode horses <laughs> at age 14. But uh, by the time I got done with that, I was running their horsemanship program during the summer months. In high school, I thought I was quite the horse guy by then, you know, hey man, I can ride these suckers, you know. And so I went and knocked on the door of a horse trainer in Clovis, California, a very respected uh, uh, elder man who had been a, a bridal horse trainer and uh, had been showing and training horses for many years. And I said, sir, I understand you might need somebody to start all your colts. And I think I'm your man. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure what he said as he shut the door. Uh, <laughs> So that didn't go too far, but I knocked again and I knocked again and uh, he has since deceased. His name was Troy Henry. Um, he's actually the man that uh, Pat Pirelli first began to uh, learn the higher levels of horsemanship from. And so I had the opportunity to ride with Troy during my high school years that gave me my first introduction to the higher levels of horsemanship, allowed me to step on some horses that I probably didn't have any business riding, you know, horses that were nicer than I was. So I got to feel what it was like to stop a horse, you know, in a sliding stop or to work a cow. Um, and so that was just a great opportunity. Then somebody said in high school, hey, you can join this ROP program and you only have to go to high school till 1130 in the morning and uh, they'll waive your PE class for your travel time and you can join this horseshoeing school over here across town. So I joined a horseshoeing school, went there for nine months, became a certified farrier. And again, that's all I've ever done since that time. I just always enjoyed horses. I started making my living shoeing horses. When I first got married, the training deal got busier and busier over the years uh, and it's nice to not have to work 50 weeks out of the year just to spend two weeks doing what you want to do you know if I was a plumber or a carpenter or whatever I'd ride rain cow horses on the weekend that would be my hobby because I just I just love it and uh, and seeing horses progress and helping people with their horses it's been very rewarding and so now you know everything about Richard Winters okay <laughs> we'll stop right there thank you yeah.